every time we buy a new pair of jeans, it's like uh, turning on your shower and letting the water run down the drain for 21 hours. According to United Nations, 10,000 liters of water is required to just grow the one kilo of cotton needed for the pair of jeans. In comparison, one person would take 10 years to drink 10,000 liters of water. Let's talk about how denims are adding to the environment crisis in today's conversation with Radhika Macheti. She is a renowned international fashion designer, serial entrepreneur with a proven track record of business growth. She is my senior from NIFT. She has a total 18 plus years of professional experience working in the fashion industry. She has been addressing events as a speaker, jury and mentor for startups, incubators and women entrepreneurs. She takes expert guest lectures at National Institute of Design and at NIFT Delhi on topics related to design, innovation, sustainability, technology, entrepreneurship, etc. She is a very good friend and a mentor. Let's welcome Radhika. Hi Radhika, I'm so happy to have you here today. Thanks a lot for such a wonderful and warm welcome, Arpita. It's my pleasure to be here in the part of this conversation and it's great meeting you, virtual meeting you. I have some questions prepared for you today. Let's jump right into them. Let us start with uh, talking about the water consumption in the manufacturing of denim fuss, where all water is involved in making a pair of jeans. I would say the involvement of water in denim manufacturing is at every stage, right from the cotton fiber, irrigation methods, manufacturing and production process involved. Dyes and fabric treatments involve the use of chemicals requiring extensive water consumption and wastewater treatment. Thus, the entire denim industry from cotton irrigation to manufacturing is responsible for a high water footprint. As you have given the pointers on water consumption, what are the issues surrounding high water footprint in cotton farming? Are there any solutions in this regard for uh, denim fabric manufacturing? In raw material in denim is cotton, which is itself a very water intensive crop and is responsible for high water footprint of denim. Also, cotton is just not water. It, uh, co uh, growing cotton requires the use of fossil fuel derived pesticides and fertilizers, which in turn impose hazards on human health and the environment. Improper use of pesticides contaminate drinking water, rivers, groundwater, poison fish, and aquatic life and lead to loss of biodiversity. So, coming to the solutions, there are a few solutions. And one of the uh, first solutions is to support organic farming, organic cotton, to reduce the petroleum-based inputs in the raw materials. Organic cotton is best processed for securing long-term supply of the fiber by maintaining the health of soil and ecosystems, as well as improving the livelihoods of farmers and communities. So I would say this is the first, uh, you know, primary first important solution. So there is, uh, coming to the other solutions, Exploring the usage of alternative natural fibers other than cotton that are less water intensive crops and do not require much fertilizers. There are some plant fibers like rami, hemp, bamboo, linen, soya bean, abaca, etc. Blends like rami cotton, cottonized hemp can be used to make denim fabric. Hemp is a more sustainable fiber than cotton and hence hemp can be blended with cotton for denim manufacturing. Thirdly, usage of man-made cellulose fibers produced using wood and pulp. The pulp maintains, mainly utilizes the wood which is not used for higher quality products such as in the furniture industry. One of the, another uh, solution I would say apart from the natural fibers which are man-made cellulose or organic, we can also explore blends of polydenim where polyester is recycled from used clothing and single-use plastic bottles. So we have now options like this, few solutions. Earlier days, indigo plants were used for denim dyeing. I'm sure there are chemicals used in uh, present times. As far as my knowledge goes, they are harmful. How far the denim manufacturers are using them? Can we um, briefly discuss about uh, dyeing methods in the denim industry? 
Well, let's talk a little basic things now because uh, dyeing and washing, whatever we are going to discuss now, needs to know a little bit about the fabric. So denim is a twill woven fabric with dyed warp and a white weft. Warp yarns are colored usually with plant indigo, synthetic indigo, wet or sulfur dyes. As you mentioned, indigo dye is an organic compound with a distinctive blue color. Indigo is a natural dye extracted from the leaves of plants called indigo ferra tinctoria. The natural form of indigo dyes is insoluble in water, hence undyeable. To use it for dyeing, it must be reduced to a water-soluble form and has to be mixed with harmful chemicals prior to using it to dye clothing. All indigo dyes need three things. Indigo, a reducing agent, and a base. Reducing agents can be sugars, some natural dyes, and other plants or chemicals. Or, I mean, a recommended base for an indigo vat would be calcium hydroxide. There's a huge market demand for denim and it's not possible to dye with natural indigo. That is, there is an insufficient production of natural botanic, botanical indigo. So researchers have developed synthetic indigo, which contains toxic chemicals such as aniline and N-methyl aniline residues. Irrespective of whether it's a plant indigo or a synthetic indigo is used, mix of chemicals is necessary for denim dyeing. Also, denim industry, most processing is carried out with the help of water, which acts as a medium. Nevertheless, these processed waters are the biggest source of pollution. The polluted water has a large quantity of contaminants such as dyed stuff, that is indigo sulfur, buffer pH controller, electrolyte, dyeing assistance, and sizing ingredients. The dyes themselves also contain heavy metals and hazardous pollutants. So this is it, it, it is uh, impossible in any manner to go without toxic chemicals. But good part is, well, very recently, a new technology of dyeing has come into existence, which is more sustainable. It uses natural indigo and completely eliminates the use of toxic chemicals. It requires only one coat of indigo to secure 90% of the color, significantly reducing the amount of water needed to dye the fabric. Indigo is mixed with nanocellulose fibrils, which is a recent creation that consists of wood pulp, and then deposits these nanofibers on the surface of the textile, essentially gluing the color in place. I was not aware of some of the points you have mentioned just now. Let's talk about the fitted uh, denims. I'm sure everyone loves well-fitted denim that stretches according to their body. Basically, it is a comfort factor. When we have stretch in the denim, that means the fabric has elastin in it. Elastin is completely non-biodegradable. How, how can a manufacturer rectify that? Are there any other options uh, in place of elastin? Well, stretch denim is preferred by customers, consumers owing to its comfort and style. Stretch denim is composition of 1 to 3 percent spandex lycra and the rest is cotton. And uh, spandex lycra, that is elastin, is, is made from depleting fossil fuels. The production of these elastin fibers strain the pla planet and emit harmful gases into the atmosphere. The best part, the good part is, yes, we do have a solution for this. There is a new innovative denim stretch fabric, which is made out of plant-based yarns and completely biodegradable. The yarns are made of natural rubber coat wrapped in organic cotton. This conversation is teaching me different things that I was not aware of before. Now, coming to my next question. A lot of water and chemicals are used for different wash effects on denim. Can you explain the general wash process and how we can reduce water consumption? Well, Arpita, this is a very uh, core question for denim, I would say, because wash is something which is a critical aspect in the design part or the manufacturing part or in the sustainable part of it. So maybe yeah. I'll take, I'll try to use the very simple terms, but then, you know, try to uh, explain a few washes. So the washes and the other surface treatments on the surface of denim fabrics enhance the beauty and popularity of jeans. They produce eye-catching effects like color fading, contouring, spotting, marbling, and creates a worn-out look which we all love and we add value to the product. Denim wash is actually a sequential process which consists of many steps. Some of the major steps 
that is a uh, pre treatment then comes the washes sometimes we need to go for tinting and dyeing after wash and the last is the softening so let's talk about a little briefly about pre treatment pre treatment process is the first and important part of denim washing which includes three uh, procedural things removing impurities desizing and reducing the risk of creasing and now the most important thing or the core is we let's talk about briefly about washes so there are many types of washes so major washes that predominantly which we use or people might be wearing you know most of us these are the washes different types of washes i would say acid wash whiskering bleach wash dyeing tinting enzyme wash rinse wash river wash snow wash stone wash vintage wash hand abrasion methods resin treatments and sanding methods so these are all the uh, you know methods and techniques to get the washes mm -hmm. so let's talk about you know few washes now which you know most popularly used yes. one is the acid wash acid wash is a process in which pure stones are soaked in a solution of chlorine bleach or potassium permanganate for a specified time the solution will be emptied and the fabrics are tumbled dried and the stones to achieve a very strong irregularly colored bleached indigo coloring with a high contrast effect marble like look acid wash is also called in different names like moon wash ice wash and marble wash now i'll talk about another wash called bleach wash i'm sure most of the people might be wearing this denims during yeah. the bleach wash strong oxidizing agents like sodium chloride calcium hypochlorite hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate are used to produce a very strong bleaching effect the selection of the chemical used depends on the dye and the desired effect to be produced then i'll talk about an interesting wash which is little better than the other washes is enzyme wash mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. fact it is said to be the most environmentally friendly of all denim jeans washes the enzyme is a protein obtained from bacteria and fungus these enzymes work on cellulose Denim being cotton is made of cellulose. The process is considered to be eco-friendly as the enzymes are biodegradable. The most common enzymes used in the industry are available in three categories namely neutral, acidic and hybrid. Once or after this enzyme wash is completed, it is important to do a cleanup process or to kill or to deactivate all the enzymes. It is achieved by increasing the temperature, upsetting the pH value etc. During the enzyme wash It is very crucial to control the parameters of the wash cycle like the pH value, temperature and duration. Any of these parameters going wrong can produce inaccurate results. Then let's discuss about a stone wash. Stone wash consists of washing denim with pumice stones in order to produce distressed faded looks. Stone washing has a huge environmental impact. the grit of the pumice stones can get into the pockets of garments and has to be physically removed this requires the denim to be washed several times in order to get rid of the dust and grit the disposal of which creates large amounts of waste it can take more than 70 liters of water to remove the pumice residues out of one load of denim then right now i want to you know uh, discuss something which is uh, most harmful i would say uh, sand blasting sand blasting is one of the most harmful and in fact it is banned in many countries right now sand blasting is a process by which the denim jean surface is abraded using sand containing silica this process imparts a worn out look to the denim silicosis is a lung disease caused by the inhalation of dust and contains free silica of crystalline form Denim sand blasting was found to be a cause of silicosis which is an incurable disease. The disease affects rapidly under you know uh, extreme high exposure conditions the conditions permanent and uh, progresses even after the exposure is stopped. It is an occupational disease which kills thousands of people every year across the globe. Because of silicosis and occupational disease it is preventable. Silicosis used by denim sandblasting was first diagnosed among workers involved in uh, denim sandblasting in workshops in Turkey in 2004. If you look at what are the reasons that people weren't aware of this sandblasting, you know, harmful wash. So the reasons for silicosis are, you know, uh, I would say lack of awareness about the dangers of silica, 
inadequate protective measures, poorly ventilated work areas, longer working hours in a day, higher exposure, poor working conditions in small workspaces. So now that we have seen the washes, we have hand abrasion methods, which are also called washes. So here, this method uses different abrasion actions to create the faded look in a selective area with pumice stones, sandpaper, etc. Whiskering, hand scraping, grinding, distress effect, etc. All of these techniques involve toxic chemicals. So if you see in general the washes that we have discussed uh, so far from acetic to enzyme and then sandblasting and the hand abrasion methods, everywhere overall, Huge amounts of pollutants are released during different processing stages of denning, especially dyeing, finishing, washing, and raising. This wastewater, if released without proper treatment, is harmful to the environment. Wastewater released from denning production contains high levels of salts, acids, alkali chemicals, dye colors, and high pH concentration. Mm. Indigo, sulfur, reactive, and VAT dyes are the major dye types used in combination with a huge amount of water. Wastewater also contains uh, traces of metals. The mm. composition of wastewater from textile process varies greatly daily and hourly, depending on the dye stuff, fabric and chemicals used. You have explained about so many washes today. I've worked uh, with some of these washes in the past. Enzyme and softener wash uh, was the common one uh, I have used. Are there any alternative methods uh, uh, to reduce harmful chemicals and uh, water consumption? Yes, definitely. You know, there is. Uh, there are now methods and innovative technologies involved in it. So let's understand the basic or the uh, primary ones. Sustainable denning can be achieved by use of innovative technology like laser and ozone to get different visual effects on the finished garments. Laser treatment is a completely dry process. Water-free, color fading treatment of denim is an ecological and economical process when we use lasers. Lasers can create local abrasion, fabric breaks and worn out look effect with precision and high productivity. Because it's an automation, automatic system, the chances of human error are eliminated in laser treatment. The other important solution is, uh, or a good technology that we have currently is ozone treatment. In ozone treatment, the ozone generated in the equipment can produce a bleaching effect. No chemicals again involved. Ozone treatment is the most advanced and eco-friendly technology in the textile industry. Using air from the atmosphere, this technology generates ozone to treat garments by reacting with fiber dyes, giving them real look of outdoor usage. All of this is accomplished in zero discharge process, achieving significant savings of water and chemicals. Commercially available ozone equipment is operated like a washing machine, but without much use of water and color fading process. These are like huge machines and without uh, water and without much usage of water and it's chemical free. As you are working towards uh, reducing the use of harmful chemicals, water consumption in denim manufacturing, can you share how your company is uh, helping the denim industry? Well, you're asking contribution. <laughs> contribution of uh, my company of what I'm doing. Well, I'm a co-founder of a firm, Lumilab. It's a trading firm that deals with future innovations. We as Lumilab are the channel partners, distributors, importers of laser machines and 3D printing machines. We provide all kinds of laser and 3D printing machines uh, to the industries like fashion, apparel, footwear, jewelry, furniture, accessories, automotive, and aerospace industries. I want to talk a little bit about lasers. And in particular, though laser has applications in all the industries that right now I said, I want to focus right now on the apparel and particularly on denim. So the major advantages of laser-based processing over the conventional or the traditional processor technologies that I have discussed so far, be it dyeing or the washing. So I'll tell, uh, these are the major advantages. One is it's completely chemical free and no water, uh, no water is involved. It's a completely dry process. Next is environmentally friendly. Complicated and intricate design patterns can be achieved. Since it's uh, anything that we work with, since we are designers, any complicated designs which we can do on a software and it can be actually, uh, we say it's marking, people say it's printed in fashion, but it can be implemented as a wash on the denim fabric. And it's also faster and shorter duration in producing wash effects. 
compared to the uh, regular methods even for a simple day wash it takes at least 2 days here you can get more complicated just in 1 minute believe it's just 60 seconds you can finish you know uh, the wash effects when we use lasers the it's a negligible damage to the strength of de denim compared to the conventional process the damage is negligible and it also requires less manpower and it has no harm for the labor force wow the difference from the traditional method and the laser method is so much now coming to the trims on the denims the metal buttons zippers wash care labels leather looking labels on the back of the denim are not every time eco friendly all these trims are uh, an issue in any other garment but uh, as we are focusing on denim today how can a denim manufacturer take responsible steps towards making them eco friendly all of the trims and accessories like metal shanks buttons rivets zippers back label etc can be made from recycled and plant derived materials they are environmental friendly and manufactured use of using less energy less water and less process chemicals just not this metal trims and buttons that we discuss certain times we use for fashion styling and when i want to discuss here is the lot more trims and accessories just not on denim so denim fabric with different ounces is used as jackets is also used for as denim shirts so in such kind of styling when we do we use lot of tapes mm -hmm. for the styling purposes so for tapes and labels uh, alternative to resource heavy cotton is bamboo tape so instead of using always cotton we can use alternative sources and i would say bamboo is one of the uh, good one bamboo requires only 10% of the area that cotton needs to produce the same amount of material but offers the same high level look and finish in the feel of it that's great news to hear about the eco friendly options you are all about sustainability when it comes to your work you teach uh, students at design colleges like nid and nift about it how do you think a non design person who is watching or listening to our conversation can keep in mind to be sustainable in their small possible way to be it anyone i mean it's not design or non design be it anyone i feel particularly those who are uh, sustainability conscious and aware of the importance of sustainability in the fashion industry can uh, you know focus on simple i would say simple three aspects or three tips while uh, purchasing any uh, product i would recommend this very simple ones that is people then we have planet and profit so let's just briefly about it when i say people I mean uh, be it any product just see if the product is done or manufactured or where it is the company or the product people manufacturers are taking care of health and safety of the workers well being and quality of life and better working conditions in the factories that i would say is the first people i mean one of the sustainability things which we see is just not always eco friendly but we uh, we need to also think about ethical you know practices so i would say people as the first second is planet planet is where the whether the product is environment friendly and biodegradable is it made from natural or recycled or renewable inputs and most importantly can it be safely composited this is to protect the planet and ecosystems and the last thing what i would say is profit so profit here with what i mean to say is something dealing with fair wages wealth and distribution fair trade and ethical practices So when you want to buy a product try to know about the mission and vision of that particular company or the brand that you buy whether they implement these kind of ethical practices like fair wages fair trade and things like that so these i would say are uh, summarizing the whole of sustainability in simple way planet people and profit denim is like everyday clothing for uh, many fashion enthusiasts i still wear my denim as part of a sustainable way of uh, living even when i know it is like vegetarian eating meat i don't buy any new pieces of uh, denim can you uh, give some tips to the consumer on how to pick good denim so that they are not contributing to the pollution well uh, i would say i just previously earlier question is that to follow the simple tips of people planet and profit that is one and particularly since we're talking about denim today uh i would just like to give uh, you know a couple of tips uh, what you want to put more focus in buying a sustainable denim mm -hmm. so i would say look for denims that are made from natural and recycled materials right from the fabric 
prints and packaging materials okay. and as discussed earlier by genes which are manufactured and with innovative methods like lasers and ozone processes to develop washes then the traditional conventional methods that required harsh and toxic chemicals okay and also just not the product i would add something to the customers because you read when you go to a store and a buy a brick and uh, you know brick and mortar stores mm -hmm. so or anything these days you get cloth bags you get you know even uh, you know uh, paper bags but certain times the carry bag is also provided can be a poly bag try to see the poly bags that they're giving are non pvc and biodegradable because these days you get this poly bags made from plant based materials so i would i would say concluded see uh, not just the product but the way they give it to you be it a tag be it a carry bag anything everything is you know sustainable and uh, eco friendly those are really useful tips if someone wants to have a sustainable wardrobe what are the decluttering tips you have for them i would say uh, first one of the most important is uh, decluttering your decluttering because you want to buy something or you already bought it's more so i would say be a responsible buyer be responsible and be more informed informed in general like watching videos and of awareness of sustainability like the that of those of arpita what she does you know a lot about a sustainability being aware what is sustainability and what this makes you uh, to shop guilt free while looking fashionable so i would say that you should not feel guilt while you're shopping and that would be uh, first thing is to become aware and be informed then after that is be organized you want to declutter it be organized and if you feel that you no longer want to use certain items due to worn out stained damaged it doesn't fit you anymore first thing is try to upcycle that same particular clothing item and transform it into something new refashion product Perfect. and if you think it's not possible then please donate if they are in a good condition you can donate it to somebody or a charity or anything and if it's in such a state where you do you want to discard it totally completely and if it's particularly denim please see if the brand that you brought the denim is ready to take it back and recycle it instead of the old denim ending up in the landfills see if there's a possibility if it can be resourced for the recycle raw materials so what happens these days there are some good brands which they take any denim irrespective of that is whether they brand and all the reason being once you give them back the denim the they use that denim to get the recycled cotton so which is a very good important thing there's you're giving a recyclable raw material back for them so i would say that try to not discard it but give it somewhere where it can be recycled now that you have given these uh, decluttering tips if someone wants to buy new clothes what kind of fabrics do you suggest is uh, denim one of them see any fabric go for organic natural and recycled synthetic fabrics and blends this should be eco friendly and biodegradable focus i would say basically focus on uh, product quality than quantity try to spend a little more but ensure to give it in the right you know uh, purchase mm -hmm. then instead of buying with the, you know i see a lot of ads i mean this might be a little deviation from the topic what you have asked me about the fabric but people are mostly on focus on quantity than quality in fashion they want to buy for less money more and then wow. keep posting in style you know something like that so i would say focus on quality from the and buy the fabrics which are organic natural and recycled synthetic fabrics not the original sin but recycled ones mm -hmm. and their blends yeah that's of course i recommend denim denim is one of the main essentials in anybody's wardrobe and we have a lot uh, you know innovative methods which are now giving sustainable producing sustainable denims so be aware of it and keep purchasing them those are straight forward tips that anyone can follow now i want to know what are the present or upcoming projects you are working with in the sustainability space i'm working on few interesting projects this year basically a sustainability involved with uh, virtual try ons blockchain technology but anyway to this topic we are talking about uh, sustainability and denim so there is something i'm working on a research project on uh, a research paper on sustainability in denim so the research paper is about why and how to achieve eco friendly denim manufacturing ethical practices and fair trade it includes adoption of innovative methods like laser technology in denim washing treatments against conventional methods that use toxic chemicals which are harmful for environment and people 
The goal is to contribute my work towards achieving global goal sustainable development goals of United Nations for a better future for all in the world. Those are really uh, great goals, uh, Radhika. I hope you achieve them all. Uh, the conversation went really well. Thank you so much for sharing uh, such uh, information about Denim today. I'm sure everyone uh, got a lot to learn from you. Thanks a lot, uh, Advita. I'm very happy that you guys enjoyed it or got some inputs, you know, learned something today. And I'm very happy that I've been on this session. It's been very nice, interactive. Thanks for asking and inviting me here. And uh, I wish everybody who's watching this uh, all the best. That was a beautiful conversation with a fellow designer. It did change my perspective about denims. How I can take care of denims in a better way than I did before. Now I can contribute better to the industry and the country. Honestly, that is my personal mission when I started this podcast to meet industry experts who are contributing towards building a responsible world that we live in. I strongly believe that there is a set of people who are heading towards a beautiful future. The generation who are in their 20s to 40s need to be part of it. That is the intention with which I created this podcast. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure to give a thumbs up and share it as much as possible. All the episodes are coming soon on my Spotify. So make sure to follow me there. I will be bringing more people on to this podcast. I'd like to know from you guys in the comments section and social media about what kind of more topics you want to know. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.